You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Here is a complete video of a maker set from start to finish. If you want to skip ahead to specific points in the video, then check the description below for skip times. Enjoy! Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop, and we're on the next oven in our Easy Bake Oven series. Yes, there's two here, but there's a reason why. It's the same oven, but there's a few slight differences. So if you're not sure what's going on, look in the description for a playlist. You will see we go all the way back to the 1963-64 oven, and we're working our way all the way to the 50th anniversary. But we're, right now, we're stuck in the 90s. So this will be the early 90s, all the way to the early 2000s that this oven was used. So a lot of you probably recognize this or have had this oven depending on your age. So let's uh, let's see now. The top oven is from 1997 and the bottom oven is from 2001. Now look at the script on the front. Very straight. And then this one here, they start to stylize the Easy Bake. The ovens themselves exactly the same. Now the earliest one also has uh, a clear lid. I've seen this lid in clear. It sits on the top. It's the warming section. I've seen it in pink. Both of our ovens have purple. And uh, if you reference the light bulb baking book, which we have in the past, and I showed it to you before, we can go to the 93 oven. Let's see. Okay, we just finished this one. So here is the 93 oven. This shows it with a clear top. See, clear top right here. And then more info about it. And what came in the box and color variations here available in white, pink, purple, and turquoise. And this is to celebrate the 30th anniversary. Here, let me read this to you. To celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Easy Bake Oven, can release an all new model. The mini wave form factor was supersized into a more modern format that resembled a tabletop microwave of its day. The new design included a simulated touchpad and LED display, a warming chamber, and warming trays atop. The oven allowed amateur bakers to create sauces and melted toppings using the oven's heat. So this uses one 100-watt light bulb. So uh, there you go. Let me just flip the top box around and see if we can get any different panels. Same. I think they're all pretty much the same. This one's a little different. So you see her there. Let me just uh, give you a little better shot there, huh? Okay, and look at all the different desserts. Looks tasty. And then there's the dipping tray. She's dipping some, uh, what are those called? Pretzels in chocolate. So that's not much there. The side panels, about the same. Let me move this one out and show you this one. Let's see. Might as well take a look at them both. While we're here, going over some history. Same side panel. Here's the back panel. Again, more great recipes. And now we see the Hasbro logo on the bottom right. And uh, we're ready to go. So let me get them both out of the boxes, set them up again, and we'll take a look at them in a little more detail. All right, here we go. Uh, both ovens out of the box. The left oven is the 90s version, and the right oven is from 2000s in that era there. And uh, I have to admit now, we got these secondhand. So if something changed on the inside or we didn't have the exact item that came with it, that could be, you just don't know when you buy something secondhand. But they each came with the two utensils, two pans, a pusher. And you can almost see there's a difference in color on the two. And if you look at the windows, doesn't this one look bluer? And then I was searching through our parts bin and found a clear lid. So this is what a clear lid would have looked like if you, here, let me just put it on this one here. And you can kind of see what it would have looked like with a clear lid. And you can see the warming trays better. Let me put it back because it didn't come with it. And then uh, that's pretty much it. Now both ovens are dated the exact same on the back, 1992 if I remember correctly. Well, I better check just to be accurate here. Here's the back of one of them. It says 1992 Kenner, okay? So even though this one came out in 90s and this one came out in 2000, it's the same oven back, probably the exact same oven, not much probably changed. Look, it's the same time, same front panels, really. So that's about it about the two ovens. But the instruction books are different also. Now, this is what we ended up with with this oven, a 95 book. And this oven is the 2001. It's got a 2001. So pretty much uh, totally different, right? Color-wise, this one's a full sheet that folds out. 
So I can't say for sure these were the right ones for these ovens, but this is what we ended up with. Go through all the stuff here now. At this point, there's no more real recipes here. You can make Rice Krispie treats using the mixing, using the top bin. So here's some recipes using your warming cups on top of oven. You can make chocolate drizzle icing, nacho chips, s'mores, crispy treats, caramel corn, and fudge. Do not cook in oven, okay? Let's see if that's the same here. This is definitely a different style brochure. So this is using their mixes. And nothing really about the warming tray that I see. And you're also not going to see the recipes that we did in the first group of ovens. So that leads us to one thing and one thing only. What are we going to bake in these ovens? Well, let me uh, clear this stuff out. I think we looked at everything here. And we'll show you the mixes. All right, here we go. And yes, this is uh, quite colorful and hard to make a decision here because... Well, let's go over everything here. This donut set, I already did. That was in the Barbie oven that we had. And then the Ego set, that was done in the Holly Hobby oven. And then you saw this one here. I showed you this one in the first video as a potential one to do. And then we've added the two M&Ms, the Scooby-Doo. And then here's what a pack looked like. Just a regular pack, not branded with a uh, company or a product. There was also uh, My Little Pony, Shrek, and other ones that are out there that we've seen. So what do I have to do? Well, I have to really do one of these here because they're from the 90s and those are from 2000. So decided on this one, the M&M cookie set right here on the left. Three color cookies. Now this one I'm going to do, but I'm not going to be able to taste it because it is pretty old. And we'll just see how it works out and see what we get as an end result. But it's still a neat kit. Still want to show it to you. And then I'll come back at a later date and do this set, and then maybe in the next oven, do the McDonald's one for sure, all right? So when I come back, we'll get the ovens out here, and I'll get started on the M&M Easy Bake Cookie Bake Set. All right, here we go. I have both ovens going. I figure, why not? I got to bake three different color cookies here, and I also want to try, they're, they're, they've been on for a little bit, a warming tray type of recipe. So it's going to still be one of those videos where I do different things, but let's focus on this kit it says, bake and decorate colorful cookies and store them in a fun cookie canister. So you get this little, almost like a mini cookie jar. Cookie dough in bright M&M colors. Again, I probably will not eat this. I say probably because you just never know. You smell the baked goods and you get hungry. So you get two red, two yellow, one green, and then all the information about it. Let me get it out. Okay, so there's the mixes, and here is the parts all dumped out on the table. So these should be pure white, and they are not. Okay, so let's just put those off to the side. I'm going to use them anyway. Like I said, we're just checking it out. And then here's my little cookie jar. I think that was, uh, let me see. Well, here's the instructions here. Okay, everything you got with it. So step one, yeah, put your cookie jar together. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> That's still cool, right? Part of the set to have your own M&M cookie jar. There's your lid. Okay. And I noticed there's a sticker in here. And that looks like it just goes right on the front. It's the red m and I'm putting you on, buddy. Any particular spot. Yes, there's a little notch there and a little notch there. Kind of where they would think you should center it. Let's see if that is true. Yes, it is. It's very true. Look at that. Ooh, yes. Off to the side. So the cookie mixes have little stains on them, so I'm not sure. So we have green, yellow, red, yellow, and red. So let's see what it says. I brought them some bowls from previous things. Each packet makes three cookies. Preheat pre oven for 15 minutes. Okay, plenty of time for that. And then grease and flour the baking pan. Okay, time for that. Pour the contents of one mix into a mixing bowl. Add one teaspoon of water and mix with a spoon. So I'm going to try to use all of their... Get all these out of the way. Let's do the green. 
supplies here. So I'm going to use theirs. I got a little cup of water here off to the side. So the green, let's see. I'm curious to see what we have. Get my scissors. I mean, you could smell it. If it smells, you know, horrid, then I'm in trouble. And it doesn't smell horrid. So, here we go. Okay. Now, kids, I would not recommend you doing these older recipes. This is just for historical purposes, right? That's what we'll say. One teaspoon of water. There we go. That's not a lot. It never seems like it's enough. And mix with a spoon. So I'm going to use their mixer here that you get. It is a bright green. Now it needs to be thick because you have to shape them and then I didn't show you there was a little stamper which you're going to stamp over to put the M in the top. So it is going to make a thicker dough. It's starting to change a little. Let's see, we'll just keep going here. Now I could take a newer, like a sugar cookie recipe from a new mix and add green dye to it. So that I get something, you know, that I could eat. You can do that too. And still use the M&M cutter and the M&M press and your little M&M jar, right? Okay, let's get in there. You could see it's, it is changing to a dough-like consistency. Okay, what I didn't do is I didn't grab some extra flour or my butter so I'll, you know I thought why would I need that I don't need that stuff that was the stuff we used in the original mixes this is all their stuff but it appears you still need other ingredients okay look see so it mixed up pretty good so what I'm gonna do now is before I go any further I'm gonna stop here get the other two things that I need I'll come right back all right, here we go. I am back, and, uh, you know, I just had to get some things, and let me just uh, take care of my pans here. I'll just put a little butter on each one. Let me uh, zoom out. I'm all the way zoomed out on here. Just a weird angle I have the camera set at. Okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I didn't necessarily, I don't necessarily uh, overly prepare for every video. I just kind of want to be surprised sometimes. For me, that's uh, the best way to do it. All right, then a little flour. Okay, there's one. And I did go ahead and just because... I want you all to realize that uh, you can use new mixes. I have some new mix here, a sugar cookie mix. So I am going to experiment with it while I'm here. I might as well. I thought about doing the yellow because my yellow packs were the weirdest ones. They looked like they were open just a little. So those I'm not too sure about. So they said to flour. On a clean surface, place dough on the surface and flatten with palm of your hand. So it looks like you're going to, I'll do a little bit more kneading here to get this into a ball. It's still cool to see, right, the colors and the different types of older recipes. It does kind of smell like a sugar cookie type recipe. 
little flower on the top. Okay, there you go. And then it says, flat with a palm of your hand with the cookie cutter cut three cookies. Remember, there's only three cookies. Let's see if I can get three. Not expecting it to come out too easy. Mm-hmm. Get a tool. That didn't work as good as I wanted it to. So let's do it again. Gonna go a little bit thinner. Gonna um, well, look how tight that is there to try to get, you know, that to to shape with that little tiny notch. I don't see that being very easy. And this side isn't the pressing side. You need the shape to actually go through so that you can stamp. Here, let me just put a little less pressure on it. see well that one's a little bit better I think at this point though we're gonna take what we could get because I'm supposed to stick on the M see the shape itself is not as important on the top it's the placement of your little M -sh design Not the easiest mold to get something out of. Okay, there. I think we have something there. So let me uh, break open these M's. I need a scissors. Remember now, I am definitely not going to eat the M's. This is purely for show. Look at them. Little M's. I got green fingers. Okay, you get it now? So that's, I think, why it's not as important to have... So then it said, let me just make sure now... Carefully remove a sugar M from the paper backing as follows. Okay, and gently press the sugar M into the M that you stamped onto the cookie. That's what we're doing. Okay, here we have three. Then it says, place the cookies in a baking pan, bake them. Okay, so I can put all three for six to eight minutes. Let me make some room here. With two ovens in here, I've lost a lot of space. Now let me get my little spatula. This one came out really thick. Okay. So, ooh. Let me straighten up a little bit. We'll get into the oven on the left and put them in there. All right, I've done some cleanup, made some room here for myself, and I have my M&M cookies, which are the green ones. Those are going to slide in, and I will set my timer off to the side. And here it goes, so let me just push this one in. Now again, oh, wrong side. Let me push it in with the right side. See the arrow there? That tells you when to stop. Okay, so now it's in the oven, and I could just let that do its thing. And then, like I said, I brought in a newer sugar cookie recipe. Just because, not to scare everybody out there with these older recipes, you know. Let's just see. I'm not sure if these are going to even work. They might not hold their shape. You know, it might be a totally different... Uh, this one called for um, three quarters of a teaspoon... of mix, I mean of water, 
Wow, that powdered. So this is a sugar cookie recipe. So I don't know, maybe I should, uh, maybe it wants you to cut back on the water for this type of shaped cookie that needs to hold its shape. It looks like a lot more mixed though to me. Oh, and I need to get some yellow in here, right? So I got some food coloring here. So that's going to be a little liquid in itself. So there's the yellow. And it said three quarters of a teaspoon. So let me just do a quarter at a time. We're experimenting now. This is total experimentation here. One, two, and then let me do a little bit of food coloring. That's yellow, huh? So that's my third piece of the liquid. Okay, there we go. We're trying to see if we can get a yellow cookie. But I got an orange, which is still cool. So let's just keep this going. Let me change that angle just a little. So a lot more experimenting here, I guess, when you're doing odd mixes and trying to actually make something that doesn't exist, like orange cookies. Now it does kind of look like that first dough in regards to how it started off crumbly and then... Same thing on this uh, recipe. I'm following the recipe from this newer sugar cookie set. That's why it had more water. Hey, I'm, I'm digging the orange. Looks almost exactly the same. So I wonder if those M&M cookies were originally their sugar cookie recipe that they've had for a long time. Well, it looks like pumpkin. Doesn't it look like pumpkin? Okay, so I need to get that onto my flour board. I need to reach for the flour. I'm purposely not showing you inside the oven at this point, but once I get this one in, then I'll be able to bring you inside. It's uh, pretty much the same consistency as what I feel. Same stickiness. See, it's sticking to my fingers just like the other one. Let's see if we can get a shape out of it. Here we go. I washed and cleaned my little M&M mold. Okay. Probably the same thing, right? Pretty much. There you go, that's not bad. There's one. We'll know how they spread. That'll be the indicator of what, if we did something right or we did something wrong. Let me add a little more flour to the top. Let's see if that helps the pressing. I mean the getting out of the press. Oh, it did. But now I have a white spotted cookie. Okay. There we go, last one. 
So I have to make one more color. So I'll clean up after this and then there we go. Oh, I poked that one a little bit. Okay. Oop, there's my timer for the first set. So let me make a quick change here. I got to get my M's anyway. We'll get the first ones out and get ready for the second set. All right, so I still haven't put my M's on, but I am ready now to push through. Let's see, it looks like they spread quite, oh, they didn't spread too bad. Hmm, they look okay, that first batch. All right, so I need to do a little reworking. Well, actually, let me get my M's on, and I'll just push them into this other oven on here. No time to waste. We're mass baking here. These are cool. This one, I think the, um, actually, the second recipe, look, at the M. Now, I could take more time and shape them and make them perfect, but the spot for the M came out nice. Oop, broken M. These spread, we're in trouble. Okay, so oven number two. Going in. Okay, not going in. We'll see what's going on. Take a look inside. Oh, I just might have had something a little bit off there. There we go. Okay, I'm going to come back and get ready for color number three. Okay, here we go for the third color, which is red. Now, the red seemed to be sealed better than the yellow. That's why I didn't use the yellow. And then this one called for less water. It's one teaspoon. Let me see. I'll be daring to do it right over the bowl. You're not supposed to do it right over the bowl. There we go. Just a little bit over, but we're going for it. There we go. How about I let you see what I'm doing? There you go. <laughs> and yes, my fingertips I did not wash. I just go right into the next one. Only because, um, why? And we're going to turn red next. I didn't necessarily need both ovens because, as you can see now, it takes about six minutes to mix a batch. So, it's not as much mix mixing as pressing and just pushing. And I will say the newer mix and this mix have very similar smell. Right, you can kind of see it changes now. I'm not used to mixing with the ones that come with it. I wanted to try to use them. It's harder because they're very spongy. The wood spoon or the spatula I've used in pasts, you know, you've got the handle which is stiffer, so it makes it easier mixing. This I kind of have to get my whole hand around it to, to press it. Okay. What do you think? Close? See, now I have red fingers. I'd say we're pretty close. I can see into that other oven. Well, you know what? I think you can see in pretty good on this oven. I gotta run a quick test on this next batch, so I want you to see inside. But since I'm running two ovens, I haven't really given you an inside look. 
which I've given you every time. So we'll see. I think I'm going to do it. There's one. Ooh, that one worked out the best. Look, it stayed. There's two. Let's do number three. All right. Oh, I like that. Almost better not to flower so much on the surface. And there is three. Okay, let me show you inside that oven real quick while we while it's baking. Hold on just a second. All right, here you go. That's what it looks like. Uh, pretty good compared to the last two ovens we looked at. Uh, you can see right in there. It seems like the the panel itself, uh, besides the purplish, has a clear on the inside where the little holes are. So let me uh, get back to where I was at, put the M's on my red ones, and get those in the other oven. All right, here we are. I'm ready to position my little M's. I bet you can remake these M's if you want to just use the mold and, uh, you know, still pretend like you're making M&M cookies. All right, so that one's set. And then uh, let me get my pan pusher here. So I'm going in from this side. Let me see if you can see it on this oven. Now, this is the other oven. I'll see if you can see the pan pushing in at least. How about we do that next here? So here we go. Oh, yes, you can. Okay. And then, uh, so next, uh, what's next, actually? Oh, next, next, is to push the other one out. What's going on here? Hold on just a second. All right, here's a real close shot of the next batch coming out. And I can't even tell to see how much they spread, if they spread, so. This is the newer sugar cookie recipe with the M's. You gotta get that at the right angle. Don't want to push out for me, huh? Oh, there you go. Here I can grab it a little bit with my one of my spatulas. So those did spread out a little bit more, but they're orange and they look cool. So when I come back, uh, the other ones will be done, and I'll be able to show you all three kinds. All right, so here we go. Here's my M&M cookies. I have the oven still going on in the back because I am going to do more for you. Let me get because uh, I want to try those warming trays out. Do a couple recipes there. So here we go. And as you can see here, I will show you my orange ones. My orange ones were the the sugar cookie newer ones. I just moved this out of the way. Let me get them all organized on the plate next to me. And then let's get these out. Now these are gonna be a little bit more difficult. They didn't want to play nice in the oven. Now this one I could eat. Not the M, but I could eat the actual cookie because it's new. Okay, let's see. Oh, that almost ended up in a heart shape. Now isn't that cute? Look at that. So there we go. That was the first M&M set. And I'm gonna say, besides a few little flower issues and, you know, M's that aren't really edible, still a fun set. And now I have my little collectible jar, I guess you would call it. I can uh, reuse the set with fresh cookie dough, right? So now let's move on to the warming trays. I have them set up in the back. I'm gonna make two recipes for you. All right, so here we go. I have the two warming trays set, uh, and they're actually been warming up, and you can feel the heat off of them. So the left one, I am going to make the s'mores recipe. 
It says, uh, in one warming cup, a half fill one warming cup with mini chocolate chips. Now, I didn't have mini, but I had some that I chopped up. So that looks about halfway. And then in the other one, it says, put two teaspoons of marshmallow fluff. Not the easiest thing to get out of a measuring spoon now, is it? There's one. Doesn't hurt to have a little bit extra in there, does it? And there is two. Okay, now that recipe says uh, warm for six to nine minutes. So let me get my timer on and set it for six okay so that's starting so uh, put two okay <laughs> put on top of cover put on put oven cover top on and then warm for six nine minutes stirring occasionally pour chocolate onto one cram cracker and the marshmallow onto another sandwich them to enjoy all right here we go I'm eating the marshmallow fluff the next one that one is Rice Krispie Treats. Place one teaspoon of margarine, okay, or butter. I'm going to use butter. Not a big fan of margarine. All right. So we'll do that one here. You know, minus what sticks on there. See it already melting there. And, oh, I lost my track there. Two teaspoons of marshmallow cream again. Let me move to that side. There's one. And there is two. cover that one this one looks like it's um, well I'll check it let me get the few things oh let's see and then it says um, put on top put on top of oven and cover okay warm for nine minutes stirring occasionally half fill the other warming cup with puffed rice cereal oh wait let me see place one teaspoon of margarine and butter and two, and okay so I made I did a little boo-boo there this goes over here Let me wipe that out and fix my error. So don't watch me there. Okay, so that's ready to go. All right, so those get mixed together. Then when it's ready, then I put in the Rice Krispies in this, and then I mix them. Okay, now we're set. Let me clean up what I need to clean up here. Come back, and we'll check the progress. We're at about, let's see, what's our time here? Halfway. All right, so I'm going to come back now and stirring occasionally. So I have two different stirrers here. I'll stir this side. That is starting to break down real nice. Okay. And then let me mix up my chocolate a little bit here. I think that's the only thing that might take a little time here. Here, let me switch this. Oh, it is melting. Look at that. See that? It's melted pretty good. Look at that. It's almost all melted. Hmm. Let it go just a little bit. And... Let me just check my fluff back here. Spread it out a little bit, right? A little more even heat distribution. All right, so I'm going to come back. Now, the one on the right, since it was nine minutes and the first one was six minutes, I can let that one go a little bit longer. Oh, there's my timer for the first six. So let me stop this. What I'm going to do is give it a little bit longer on. I'll do three for the nine. 
but I will get set to make the s'more. So I'll do a little change here. Move an oven, get my graham crackers in, and make that first set. All right, so the first group is done. It's had its time. Now, it says pour, so I'm not sure. I'm using now my top as a tabletop. It said on one crack graham cracker, put the chocolate. Trimming the edge. Alright, I guess when I smush it, it will spread. And on the other one, put the marshmallow. Well, there I go. Then it said, um, sandwich them together and enjoy. Alright, well, I finally get to eat something here. Look, what do you think? that look like a s'mores to you? Smush them and eat them. The chocolate's not hot, but it is smushy. Look at that. Got all over my finger. There you go. That is the first one. I'm going to move this up and out of the way. And finish up with the Rice Krispies. Alright, so the Rice Krispies now. This one said to uh, do the butter and the marshmallow, which looks pretty well heated up and ready to go. And then fill the other one halfway. There's no exacting... Ooh, you jumped over. Okay. Then... Uh, Thoroughly mix the puff rice cereal with the warm mixture of margarine, butter, and marshmallow cream. Take a small amount from the bowl and form a cookie shape. Place it on a plate. Refrigerate. All right, let me get a little plate here. Got them off to the side. I'll just put it up here. And then I'll put this in here. Remember now, my butter might stick a few here. some stray crispies here. Get in there. So I think I'm going to do is not try to form it. I'll just take it, pour it on my... See, because that's what a Rice Krispie should look like. And then I think, um, place it on a plate, refrigerate for a half hour. So I'm going to have to come back. going to form it on my glass dish here into a shape. Okay, I'll be back in a half hour. Well, there we go. It sat for about a half an hour in the refrigerator, and I had to pry it off the bottom just a little, but it seems to hold its shape. Let me give it a taste. Surprisingly, it's tasty. I mean, it is butter, marshmallow, and Rice Krispie treat. So, I mean, Rice Krispies turned into a Rice Krispie treat. So there you go. That was an interesting video. Some things I couldn't eat, but a pretty cool M&M set. And then a couple things I made on the top in the warming section of the Easy Fake Oven. So I hope you enjoyed that video. And next time uh, we'll do another oven. So uh, thanks for watching. It's really appreciated. And if you want to see more videos, remember, look in the description. Later. If you want to find this item, click the link in the description area below the video. You can also watch more videos in this series by clicking here. Thanks for watching! And always remember, if you see a lucky penny, pick it up!